Thank you for tuning in to Mr. Cliff's Toy Shop. On today's review, we take a look at the Storm Collectible Mortal Kombat's Goro figure. It's a figure here that I've been waiting for for quite some time, so I'm happy to have it. I'll be scoring this figure in six categories. Accessories, articulation, design, is it essential to your collection, functionality, and price. Once the scores are totaled, I'll give you my opinion if this is a pass or a purchase. So let's take a look at the accessories. So Goro comes with two head sculpts, the first of which has a muted tone. What I really like about both head sculpts is that you can see the impressions in the face from the expressions that the, the head sculpt itself is making. I really like the red eyes with the black pupils. And as you look up top, you can see some veins, another imprint in the forehead. You can see the black flesh tone as well as the black spots. The second head scope, some more of an angry expression. This is the one that I would be using. Again, really like the impressions. I'm not a fan, however, of the teeth. I think some more paint could have been added here just to separate the teeth from the gum line, it all looks a little bit like one piece if I can get the camera to focus. So that didn't come out as clean as I would like, but I do like the flared nose, the eyebrows, the lines in the head. And as you see, the peg up top comes for the next accessories that we will be showing. Goro comes with two ponytails. One is more swooping, the other is a straight down design. So with the ponytails, you can port them into his head like so. And there you go. Goro also comes with six pair of hands. On the figure itself, it has two pair of fisted hands. And you have a variety of open hands. I won't go through each of these as they are very similar. Just the width in which he's grabbing is a bit different. So I like the black nail polish. I like the lines on the fingers. And you can also see some veins. And these hands aren't as open as the ones that I previously showed. And Goro also comes with two effect pieces, which I have no idea how to use. If you can see how the back of this effect piece is sort of shaped, and you can see the front, it doesn't appear to be any way to plug this onto Goro himself. This does come with a stand. However, since I'm not big on stands, I probably will not be able to fully utilize this piece. And we also get this stand, which seems way too small for the figure. Maybe this is to actually hold the accessories rather than hold Goro. Articulation. So the, pony, the ponytail is able to rotate. The head is able to look up that far. It's able to look down all the way. It's also able to turn left and right. You get a decent amount of pivot. So with the arms, the first arm is able to extend out that much. As you can see, there is a bicep cut, upper bicep cut here. Single jointed elbows that bend in that far. And you get rotation at the wrist. The wrist is able to hinge up, down as well as left and right. You also have a butterfly joint, which moves in about that much, moves back about that much. So for the second arm underneath, it extends about that much, same amount of articulation throughout, so I don't need to go through it. No butterfly joint here. However, you do get some movement. Also with the top arm, you are able to rotate it around a full 360. 
So for the torso, we're going to break it down in two parts, lower and upper. Let's start with the upper. So the upper, you get excellent range. It's able to go this way, this much left and right. It's also able to crunch back that much, forward that much. And it's also able to pivot both sides. Now with the lower section, you don't get any of that action. It does, however, turn at the waist. So the legs are able to extend all the way out. A lot going backwards. Goro is able to do a full 360. You're able to get rotation at the upper hip. Double jointed knees, which bend in that far. Two points of articulation on the foot. The toes move that far up. Don't move down at all. With the ankle, really doesn't move up. It moves a little bit down. And the movement in the foot, it doesn't pivot to the point to where I would call it an actual pivot, but you are able to get some movement from it. So for accessories, Goro doesn't come with a lot, but he does come with everything I remember from the first Mortal Kombat. However, it would have been cool if they would have included some effect pieces that came with later versions of Goro in different Mortal Kombat games. Uh, I remember at some point he shot fire from his mouth, I think one of the fatalities, he ripped the arms off. So with that, Storm Collectibles could have simply included the arms that came with, I believe it's Ermac. Uh, so for accessories, I'm going to give this figure a 7 out of 10. So for articulation, I'm going to give Goro a 9 out of 10. He is not perfect. However, for a figure that's this big and using four arms, he moves very well. The only issue that I have with him is the lack of movement. And the ankles. So for design, I'm going to give Goro an 8 out of 10. He is the spitting classic image of what I remember this figure to be in the Mortal Kombat game. So why didn't I give him a 10 out of 10? I'll get to that point shortly. But before then, let's talk about what works so well. And at first, it's the flesh tone. The figure looks good throughout. I really like the darker tones that come in certain points on the head, the shoulders, uh, the top point of the hips, and so on. In addition, I like the vein work on the figure. To me, it looks very natural, as well as the forearms. To put forearms on a figure, you sort of need two torsos. And I think that the sculptors did a fantastic job making this look as natural as it can be. Nearly everywhere in this figure that has paint. There isn't much neutral. You can start from the head and starting up top. You can see the darker skin tone that kind of comes in here. There's also some red which may not show through the camera. But that red actually continues down the arms, through the body. Even in the areas to where the gold bracelets here. There's black and brown that surround them. You get down to the legs. There's also some red in the paintwork. When you look at the white wrapping around his leg, I can see at least three different colors here. And that continues even on the back of the figure. I think they did a great job painting the back. And sometimes this is the area where some companies skip out. Now, the reason that this isn't a 10 for design would be the upper portion of the torso. It's made out of a rubber piece, which is great. And I'll get into that part when it comes to functionality. However, I can't get it to sit flat. To me, it always looks like this piece is floating. And that just bothers me a little bit. I understand why it's done that way, but nevertheless, it doesn't look natural when it's floating. 
If there was just a way to keep it pressed to the lower torso, that looks much better in my opinion. So is Goro essential to your collection? I give him an 8 out of 10. If you're building a Mortal Kombat lineup, this is a figure that you will want to have. By no means is it a Sub-Zero or Scorpion, but it's certainly one of those characters that when you think about Mortal Kombat, you certainly remember. So for functionality, I'm going to give Goro an 8 out of 10. There is a lot to like with this figure, starting with the ponytail, which can be switched to something different and it actually rotates. What I don't like, however, about the ponytail is once you find yourself posing the figure, it's very easy for it to fall off. Now, the chest part, the good and the bad, it is made out of some sort of rubber or silicone, which is excellent because as you're turning the upper torso, it will not damage this part. So that was done very well. The setback is that the lower torso has no articulation. There's no ab crunch forward, backwards, no side to side pivot. So just having a point of two and arti of articulation in the lower torso would have gave this figure more range of movement. Another area that I like for functionality is the way that the, what should we call these? Uh, drawers were done, for lack of a better word. They're also made out of rubber, rubber, so it allows you to get excellent range of movement and it's not restricted by this. So another area of improvement would be to have an added point of articulation somewhere on the leg, upper thigh cut, rotation at the lower foot, some, somewhere to just add an additional point of articulation would help to benefit this figure. Also, Goro is not the easiest to stand. You will get him to stand, but it will take some moving and some prep work. So Goro is priced at $95. I was able to pick mine up at New York Comic Con, so I didn't have to pay for shipping. By no means is $95 a cheap amount for a six inch scale action figure. However, compared to the line, which most figures run from 55 upwards, I feel that this is a reasonable price. So for pricing for Goro, I am going to give him a, an eight out of 10. So that gives us a cliff score of 48 out of 60. Now, is this figure a pass or a purchase? In my opinion, it is absolutely a purchase. In my opinion, even if you don't collect the Storm Collectibles Mortal Kombat figures, Goro is still a worthy character of having in your collection if you collect other lines such as Mythical Legions, Masters of the Universe, and perhaps a few other licenses. So thank you for tuning in. I'm going to really attempt to do some reviews on some of my other New York uh, Comic Con pickups before jumping to some other stuff that I have. So thank you for tuning in. Hope to see you the next video.